All right, let's talk about how um, what what our experimental variable is and what your uh, responding variable is. Um, the experimental variable will be anything that you change, what it is that you change. The rest of the experiment, all those other variables need to be constant and controlled um, to keep the experiment valid. So for example, say I decide I want my experimental variable to be water. Um, that means in my five baggies, I'm going to have my three foodstuffs in each one, same sizes, same type. I forgot to mention that. You want to tell us what kind of bread you got, what kind of cheese, so once again we can duplicate it exactly. Um, but anyway, so it's all set up, and so you're going to keep temperature and the amount of light they get constant in all of them. And how are you going to figure out that? You're going to go online and look for optimum conditions for mold and fungus, growth on food, or whatever, however you want to word it. Do some searching and you'll figure out a temperature range and a light uh, range that is uh, optimum uh, is an optimum condition for fungus growth or mold growth. So um, those two are controlled. So let's say I decide um, I want to only use water as my experimental variable. That means I got five baggies. In the first baggie I'll put zero, no water. In the next one I'll put a fourth teaspoon of water. In the next one a half teaspoon of water. And the next one three quarters teaspoon of water. And the next one a whole teaspoon of water or however much you decide is, is was going to catch the optimum in that range. And so um, I now have my experimental variable set up. So I have to control temperature and light now. And so I've done my research and let's say I decide that I want them all in dark. That's not actually the case all the time. Whatever you, whatever you do, you put them all in the same spot. Um, so you want to keep the temperature range the same. Um, a lot of times people will put them in an envelope to block the light and they'll put them in a certain place in the house that's the temperature range that's um, optimum for growth. Um, so they've got that. Then, so your experimental variable in that situation is water. If I put the optimum amount of water in all of them, say I put a half, fourth teaspoon of water, I don't know what it is, a fourth teaspoon of water in all five baggies, I put them all in the same temperature zones, so I kept the temperature the same, but I changed the amount of light, light would be my um, experimental variable. Um, if I j kept light the same, but um, kept them in, and put the same amount of water all in all of them, and I just changed the temperature, and put them in different temperature zones inside a bag, inside an envelope, so the lights this all dark. Um, then I then temperature is my experimental variable. You're only going to choose one, and that's what you're going to change. So I've chose. Let's say I chose water, and I've got them all set up. Then my responding variable is always going to be the amount of mold that's growing, because that's going to really be part of your hypothesis. If whatever your conditions are. If sufficient water is available, um, then hi higher mold growth will be uh, exhibited or as measured by blah, blah, blah. So you're going to work that out and you'll see examples and you'll find it. But the responding variable, which you have to clearly identify, is always going to be the amount of mold that grows. So here's the big conundrum. You have to figure out how you're going to measure that. Um, I don't have fancy, wonderful uh, equipment for you at home to do that. You got a baggie with some food in it. So you have to devise it yourself. Sometimes people draw a grid on it and then they figure out how many spots of the grid, how much, uh, how many cubic, how much uh, surface area is covered. Um, sometimes they just make an estimate of the whole thing, how much surface area is covered with mold, a percentage. Um, sometimes they make precise measurements of colonies. Um, one centimeter uh, diameter, blah, blah, blah. So you have to decide to define that yourself and explain it in a way that we could follow it. Um, so that's the measurements. You're going to post this information to your blog um, every other day. You'll have your five ba baggies listed. Tell us what's happening. Um, no mold growth yet, or if you start to see some, any other observations, if the cheese looking melty and liquidy, put those observations in there. You might need to refer to them in your conclusion. Um, but always put your measurements. So that measuring system you developed, you're now going to use it as that mold starts to grow and you'll be posting in there. And so at the end of this, really and truly, you've got your whole lab report done. Um, you'll just transfer this stuff over into your lab report. All you'll have left is the conclusion.